Hello and welcome to SHOT Show. Also, welcome to T-Rex Labs. This is the first video of the T-Rex Labs YouTube channel. This is the first video on a brand new channel and I would love to tell you what the purpose of the channel is but we're at SHOT Show and we don't have much time so I'm gonna to talk to you about SHOT Show. There's a lot of SHOT Show content covering firearms uh, and the cool stuff that's happening in the gun industry across a very large base of cool products, weapons, lights, etc. But I wanna talk about something different in this video. I would like to talk about radios, drones, some of the more technical stuff, which is not to say that small arms are not high technology in and of themselves, or that some of the companies that are getting a lot of buzz, like PSA or Holosun, are not building high tech products. Holosun has a thermal sight for a pistol. Uh, it's a very cool thing to pack into such a small package. But nevertheless, there's a lot of attention on the stuff on this floor. There's a little bit less attention on some of the drones, some of the radios, some of the law enforcement products, some of the stuff that we have downstairs. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. And we're going to go over some of the stuff that, uh, yeah, I, I, I would actually be surprised if there's YouTube videos about SHOT Show that cover this stuff. So we're going to do it here on T-Rex Labs. So you have surely seen this Persistent Systems Wave Relay MPU-5 many times before. It is an extremely common uh, radio to see on the backs of cool guys doing SWAT stuff and soldier stuff. Um, and it's a little bit more complicated than it looks. It's more than just the next generation of radios that do regular radio communication. This is a full-on Android computer, so you can plug keyboards, mice, cameras, screens directly into it, but it also allows you to plug just regular connectors into it so you can do regular radio stuff. Um, and the way that it does its radio communication is also kind of special. So these three different antennas here give it diversity connection, uh, but it operates more like a very advanced Wi-Fi radio than your normal handheld FM transmitter type radios. This builds a digital communications network with the other radios that are in range. So, I can't actually speak to exactly how they have to set it up right now, but in theory, this radio sitting on this table right here could be communicating with that guy's radio from that guy's radio if they couldn't otherwise talk to each other. Now, because we're in a little tiny convention hall setting, all the radios could talk to each other. There's no reason for a digital mesh to exist. But if we were spread out, if some people were in a different building, if some people were upstairs, the fact that this radio can forward traffic from other radios to other radios would come in extremely handy. And the other thing that this radio often gets used for, even though you primarily see it on people's kit, you primarily seeing it being used like a regular handheld radio, this is a network interface that you can plug Ethernet and USB directly into. So it is often used to control drones and robots and other things, or be a signal repeater just by being put somewhere, or plugged into a camera so that you will have a camera feed from a certain place. So that gives you a lot of robust capability, which unfortunately, and you probably saw this coming, comes at a cost. This is not a cheap radio for you to buy. And uh, if you get one radio, you're not even getting the full experience. If you get two radios, you can talk to each other. But this system really shines when you have multiple radios building a very large and complicated traffic forwarding mesh. So you are looking at a pretty expensive proposition to build that particular mesh. But there are other people in the radio space doing these highly advanced mesh uh, MANA type radios. Uh, this right here is a streamcaster from Silvis Technologies. And to explain Silvis Technologies, we're gonna talk to Ryan. Hey guys, how are you today? Uh, so welcome to the booth and we're glad you guys are here. We'll talk through some of the things that we're doing right now. Uh, obviously, we have a couple of different models out here for you to see. This over here is our SC4400 model. It's a, up to a 20 watt variant. Four, four antennas. Four antennas, uh, all MIMO radios. 
This is our 40, SC4200 radio, and this goes up to a 10 watt variant uh, with two antennas, obviously. Uh, we just were talking about the persistent system videos, three antennas, but more of a diversity antenna setup, two antennas, but you guys do beam forming. Let me get a pause right here because we need to talk about beam forming. The Silvus radios can use those two antennas to create two signals that combine to form a beam. This means that you have directional radio power, so your one watt radio performs a bit more like a two watt radio, or your five watt radio performs more like a 10 watt radio. But there's another feature to this. Not only can you steer that beam dynamically around as you move and the other nodes in the mesh move, but you are also steering your signal away from potential enemies who are trying to intercept your signal. So it has a pretty significant effect when you're in a hostile environment with a lot of jamming, intercepting, and so on. And then a lot of the uh, electronic warfare resilience that's built into these radios, that's a huge value add. Um, you know, we, we sort of cut our teeth and, and our bread and butter is, is operating in contested environments. That, that we do very well. And it's because we're able to combine multiple MIMO techniques together to be able to function in those type of, of environments. So one of the big differentiators between us and some of the other MENE and mesh companies that are out there is really the waveform. So Silva started out as a DARPA project. Uh, it was funded by DARPA originally. Our CEO, Babak Donishrad, uh, really developed the waveform. And we built this radio you know, from the stack up. So we're not reliant on standard 802.11 wireless chips, which we know in contested environments is right. very yeah. easy to detect, jam, uh, and, uh, and manipulate, right? So in control of our own waveform from the ground up gives us the ability to do techniques that otherwise wouldn't be done, or wouldn't be capable of being done. What you see here on each of the lines is the actual route that each uh, node is capable of taking to get from one radio to another. So you can see where the self-healing, self-forming portion of this comes in. If we lose this guy, we can easily reroute traffic to every other node on the network. So that's, that's where the robustness comes in on a, on a mesh network. Yeah, I have spent a lot of time pulling my hair out, programming repeater pairs for analog radios. Digital radios that automatically route traffic is very appealing. Yeah, and I think it, you know, sometimes we get a little confused with radios because we think a lot of, you know, handheld, you know, voice radio comms, but really I like to think of these as data links because the yeah. value add here is that we can send anything. It can be multicast, yeah. it can be video, it can be voice. Um, we have the ability to send up to 100 megs of throughput from radio to radio, and we've done this at extremely large uh, lengths or long distances, uh, hundreds of miles, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and low latency. Uh, we have a mutual friend who, uh, I don't think we can mention the name of the company, but they do a, uh, remote vehicles. Every single one of their vehicles has a Silvis radio. That is the backbone of all their communication. And uh, yeah, it's that's, Coming from him, that is pretty high praise, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things we're proud of is the partnerships that we have at Silvus. We get to work with some of the most amazing companies. Um, you know, I love that we, we do the backhaul, the data portion, but we really leave it to the end users to do the innovation. And, yeah. and they find ways to use this, uh, you know, in, a, in a ways that, that save lives and, and it's really meaningful. You know, right. it's, not, it's not just hobbyist stuff, but, it, you know, but it's also stuff that's being used and deployed in a way that they really can save lives. So going back to the MPU-5 and the persistent systems uh, wave relay thing, you can go back and forth on what is happening technologically inside of the radio, but the other thing that they really bring to the table is a lot of really solid accessories that work in a way that makes sense to radio people. So this right here is a push to talk thing, and it lets you change a bunch of the settings and press buttons, and that just attaches directly to the radio attaches to headsets, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, it's very expensive, but uh, it's essentially a fancy audio interface that makes this behave like a proper radio, but they also make a fantastic end user device, which is fancy name for a Android screen. Now there's already Android running inside of the radio, so all this has to be is a screen, but it's got nice buttons, it's got little joysticks, so you run ATEC on this thing, you can drive drones with this thing, you can drive robots with this thing, and uh, physical buttons. If there's any Android phone makers out there, physical buttons, we would like those back. But with this particular system, even though the radio side, the signal side, the waveform and some of the electronic warfare components may not be the most advanced, these accessories make it extremely usable in the field. 
you pay for them, but you do get something that is really functional, practical, and it just makes sense. But before you make up your mind, remember that Silvis has a lot of accessories and partners too. So you've got some stuff back here. You've got a camera. You've got uh, your push to talk capability to run it directly to comms like anything else. Bridge to uh, other radio networks so that you can connect to other, other nets. Uh, and then speaking of collaborations. So this is a collaboration that we did in conjunction with CAGWorks. The idea behind this really was to try to eliminate what the soldier has to carry. Uh, we end up with multiple radios and, and real estate becomes kind of difficult, but also to add extra value. So CAGWorks is amazing at what they do. Uh, they're part of the Inner Soldier Wireless program. Uh, they have different computing options based, uh, built into the computer on the radio board. And then they've installed our radio on here. So the same SC4200 that you're seeing is available in this uh, CAGWorks dock with all the analytics and processing power and everything that they yeah. offer. It's, it's a pretty nifty setup. You just throw it right here on your front placard kind of area and I'm assuming antennas. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of highlighting a company that we've done some work with now uh, called Farfield Exploits. There are some, some very smart guys out of the UK and they really uh, get this stuff. They were end users. They wanted to come up with a way to be able to solve some of the cabling and antenna problems that we all run into. Specifically, you know, if we're proned out and shooting, how do we still get good connectivity through our antennas now that they're oriented the wrong direction? And also like managing kit. Yeah. Um, so the, this is kind of their development. Uh, they have the ability to do these covert antennas that really are intended to, to ride like this, if you think about it, over your shoulder. And then they were smart enough to web this into some, some uh, webbing. So this can slide through the molly webbing in your vest, yep. right into the CAGWORK stock or whatever radio that you're operating, and give you the ability to clean up the entire uh, you know, vest. So obviously, this is not the next thing that you buy after you figure out how to program your Balfame. But I do think this is the future. This kind of digital error correcting, auto forwarding, self-healing network fixes a lot of the issues with old analog radio technology uh, without making it too complicated. One of the things that's important to us is to design something that's very complicated, but in a way that's very simple for the end user to be able to use. So you can see here we've got basically four uh, settings. We can train a guy to do four of these things and ultimately he's gonna be connected and on the mesh and, right. and, and live. Well, I am super impressed with the level of uh, technological development, um, the complex capabilities of this radio, some of which we can't talk about on video, but we did talk about earlier, but also the simplicity to actually bring those features to bear in different environments. So uh, I think this is incredibly interesting. Uh, I think that we're going to talk more about some of these ideas, but the main reason we wanted to cover some of these products, even though they may not pertain to everybody, uh, they are, I think, interesting looks into the future. So as you think about radio communications and connecting devices, vehicles, and various other things, uh, yeah, I, I want people to be more aware of what's out there, more aware of who they can go to if they need something immediately. Uh, or just kind of have a rough idea of what might be coming down the pike. So thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, on, on behalf of all the folks that I know who are running these radios, thank you for putting so much time and effort into it. Now, as cool as all of the radio stuff is, and there's some other stuff here. There's the Brink drones, there's some tethered drones down at Zenith. Some very interesting high technology stuff. But I will say, as awesome as those radios are, uh, as capable as uh, some of the technology inside of those things, as much as I think those are the future. And we should be thinking about those kind of capabilities, even if we are still, you know, in Baofeng territory personally. There is something cooler at SHOT Show, which I want to tell you about in the next T-Rex Labs video. It is not a radio. It is not a drone. It is not even a cool bullpup. Uh, it may not even be a product at all, but you'll have to wait till the next video to see what it is uh, and learn more about what T-Rex Labs is going to be.